have the 30,000 jobs at the Gigafactory, this area is going to look a lot different in three to four years. Joe Rogan's moving here. Where are the Tesla employees going to live? I think there's a 90% chance that security's gonna come and stop us. What you're seeing behind me is a ton of dirt movers that are moving dirt out here in kind of swampland a little bit in East Austin, Texas. We're only three miles away from the airport right now. And this is the site, the current working site 24 seven of the next Tesla Gigafactory. This is going to be bigger than any Tesla Gigafactory that's out there right now or that's getting made. Bigger than the Germany one, bigger than everything. Here's a map right here that shows you the size of it versus all of the other ones. This is massive. All of those Tesla Cybertruck orders, maybe 500,000, maybe a million Tesla Cybertruck orders should mostly be produced here next year. So of course, I'm a big dummy and a big Tesla fan. So I'm like, I'm gonna go hop on a plane, fly down to Austin, Texas, just so I can look at this dirt and kind of look at this monumental place. Why in the world did Elon choose to come to Austin? And why is he moving the company headquarters from California to here? Matthew McConaughey lives here. Joe Rogan's moving here. Like there's some nice neighborhoods. I got some of my good friends here. Not sponsored by the home real estate team, but they are the number one realtor team in all of Austin. This is my buddy Anwar Beck. If you remember Matt and Anwar Beck from a lot of our Tesla videos, I always run into these guys. They're some of the biggest Tesla fans and owners that I know. Okay, so what's going on tonight here on this exact dirt spot? Tonight is the groundbreaking. The Tesla Owners Club of Austin officially is gonna celebrate the beginning of this project. We're gonna have 75 Teslas running all along this white line hoping that huge trucks don't run everybody over. That would be awesome. <laughs> and we can't wait to get our cyber trucks in about a year and a half from this location. And potentially the roadsters. What about the guys and girls that actually make the truck come to a reality that are here putting the pieces together and working with the batteries and doing everything? What kind of neighborhood options do they have? Is Austin an expensive place to live? Do they have decent housing? I would imagine it's better than California, but... Um this is like a mobile home community that is only three minutes away from Tesla Gigafactory. This right here is probably lower than the price range of most of the Tesla employees, but maybe it will work. You're 15 minutes away from downtown. The airport is literally right there. If you're somebody that's from California or New York, you're gonna be like $60,000 or $400 a month is what the rent is for these places. Um, that's kind of insane. So this is the lowest end of the price range. Do you hear the and right now we are six minutes away from the Gigafactory. This house behind me is around a $275,000 house. And uh, let's go inside, let's see what it looks like. What does $275,000 get you in Austin, Texas, six minutes away from the Gigafactory? Four bedrooms, two bath. Dang. Uh, yeah, covered porch, garage door opener, sprinkler system, all the appliances except for the fridge, washer, dryer. And new construction resale in the area is gonna be like 225 to 240. So for 25, 30,000 more, you get this, you're 15 minutes of downtown Austin, and you're six minutes of the Gigafactory. It's nice and quiet here too. So there's around 100 homes in this area that are going up right now and they have land to build more. This is called Sundance Crossing, six minutes away. Like today in 2020, people really are able to get this big of a house in a good area for that much money, for 200, in the 200,000s, that's amazing, that's amazing. Now I kind of want to see like a super duper expensive place, like where? Are the executives going? Where would somebody like Matthew McConaughey live? Maybe we'll go find his actual house. It's early Sunday morning right now, and this behind me is Penny Breaker Bridge. And along this river, it's a Colorado River, but they've dammed it up. They call it a lake here. It looks like a giant river, like the Mississippi. But this is where Joe Rogan is probably going to be living. This is where Matthew McConaughey lives, like right around the bend here. You're probably about 20 minutes away, 20 to 40 minutes, depending on traffic, away from the Gigafactory and where hopefully Tesla's new headquarters is gonna be. And so when Elon Musk and his executives move here, this is probably the area that they're going to want to look. Five million, thirty million dollars. This is the Austin Country Club right here. I think it's 180,000 for you to even pay for your membership to get in and then you pay your monthly dues and there's a huge list. Like it takes you years and years and you have to like prove yourself through like all these parties and things to even be able to get into this country club. Super exclusive. There's one home directly across from the Austin Country Club that looks like it's a compound straight out of James Bond. Like you can drive down underneath it. They have probably have an underground bunker. There's big artwork out there. That's the kind of place that I imagine like the third or fifth richest person in the world living, like Elon Musk.
Okay, so we are in the car right now. We are cruising in a Founders Series Model X. This was the 67th Tesla Model X ever built. It was the first one to come to California. Wearing my mask inside the car. These guys have got their masks on. While we are in the car, we're wearing these things. They have these little um, filament things coming out of the top and it's supposed to like ionize and clean the air or something. I don't know if it works, but um, we're gonna be safe when we're in here because I did just travel. I wore a mask the whole time, but and I cleaned off my chair on the airplane and everything. But you never know, you wanna be safe. We wanna stay healthy and clean during a pandemic and uh, this little Iron Man thing is going to do it. Do you think it's gonna work? Uh, that's what I'm told. I'll send you the study. <laughs> I'll send you the study. Okay, so we have made it to Matt's house. There's his Model 3, there's his Model X. And uh, they've got some other electric things. <laughs> what the heck is this? Is this an electric motorcycle? This is an electric motorcycle. I put my logo on it to make it a tax write-off, but it's Monday Motorbikes. Here's the cool part. It's got pedals, so that makes it a bicycle. No. That means no, that means no registration. Um, I can go in the bike lane or I can go in traffic. It goes up to 45 miles an hour in off-road mode. How much do these things cost? This one's 4,500. They've got a $2,000 version. And it's just made to go uphill. Oh my gosh, that <laughs> looks scary. That looks kind of scary. It is, dude. Have you ridden this thing? Uh, I may or may not have crashed one of these before. No. Into a Model 3. <laughs> into a Model 3? <laughs> a brand new Model 3 at the was last. It, whose was it? Yours? Uh, we were having a Tesla party at the house. We had like a hundred Teslas. This was last year, dude. <laughs> yeah. It's quirky, dude. Watch him come up. Slow down! Slow down! Do you see it? I mean, it's... Oh my high. gosh. And all that on a bike. So you can take that on the trails? Uh, technically you could, but you'd get funny looks. I drive this to downtown because I can choose to either sit in traffic or go in the bike lane, whichever is faster. And, um, you know, we're close enough. I can get there in about six minutes. So um, I see there's pegs on the back. Do you ever get on and ride with Matt on the back? All right, tight end, What? If I pedal, does the automatic start going? No, you don't have to pedal, it just puts your feet. That's okay. what makes All it right. cool. I feel it. Oh yeah! Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> what is that? Isn't it? The brakes. They hit hard too. Okay, I'm going on toward the hill. Okay. Be careful, be careful. Lean forward. Oh God. You go up the hill, typical electric power. No problem. I hope he doesn't come downhill too fast, dude. Like, like, like legit, I'm scared. I'm terrified of that thing now. YouTube YouTuber tip. Ouch. <laughs> the GoPro in your mouth, it just barely fits on me. That was the Hero 8. I'm like, ah, this thing's fun. It's not the safest thing. Like, I don't think I would feel comfortable with Lincoln riding on this because it has a lot of torque. But an adult, pretty safe. Like, vacation town, this would be a lot of fun. And then this guy, I don't know. Like, you see, this is like a people mover thing. All right, one last drive before we go. Um, let's go fast. And I killed it. Press ignition. Oh no. So you need a little chip, a little reader thing that you put on there. Oh, that's right. That's <laughs> red. That's not ignition. Matt, we need your help. It's been a good day. Like we've seen tons of different places. This is called Westlake, this area. It's like more hilly. So there's like a lot of hills. It's in the mountains. I hear you. I hear you. Right. You're trying to steal it. Stop it, Dan. I'm not. There we go. This is like the Westlake area. This is where Matt lives. And this is where um, it's more of like a family neighborhood. You have the downtown vibe where it's a cool place to stay and live. But if you have kids and you want them to be in good public schools, like this is the place. Really nice neighborhood. I think if I lived in Austin, I would live here. Right now it's about 25 minute drive to the Gigafactory. But once the traffic is back after the whole post COVID thing, it could be like 45 minutes, 50 minute drive. So you've got to kind of weigh your options there and see if it makes sense for your family versus those like starter home things that we showed you earlier. But um, one last ride. He's having way too much fun. <laughs>
I can't get this place out of my head. The last time I was in Texas, we went to this place called the Salt Lick. And it's a very well-known place. They even have one in the airport here in Austin. It's barbecue. And now we're back. It's been, I think, nine years since we were here last time. Best barbecue that I've been, I've had probably in my entire life. And uh, let's see if it lives up to what, the way it was nine years ago. Would you say it's the best in, in Austin or are there other places you like? I'd say there? it's number four. Number four? Four or five. How about you? It's the best. It's the best. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm a Franklin's fan. Check out this building. It's just this old building that's been here forever. And then that's where the meat is being cooked and coming out. One of the things I love is if you see the guys behind me, they have their own cooler. Most people bring their own coolers with drinks when they come here. I thought that was really interesting when I first came here. We just spent $132 on meat for three guys. And one of them is not eating meat today. Yeah. Did so we buy too much stuff? We definitely did. <laughs> we, got, we got food for eight, I think. We got a lot of meat. <laughs> This is where all the magic happens, right here. This is the fire grill right here, and then all the different meats are cooking. They literally take them right off of the grill and put them on the table and chop them up and then put it on, weigh it, put it on a plate, and then they just walk right out to the customers and give it to them fresh. So at first I was like, let's just get our stuff to go and we'll just eat it when we get back to the hotel. And they're like, no, 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 no. Part of the experience is you have to get the meat right when it's fresh and hot and eat it right away and it just tastes fresh, juicy, moist, and good. So anyway, that's a lot of meat. Okay, you're not gonna believe this. Anwar Beck ate all of the meat. <laughs> Three pounds of meat is in that guy's belly. I don't know how they do Woo! it. You guys eat a lot of meat in Kazakhstan or something too? Of course, dude. Oh. We eat meat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> he didn't eat all the meat. We're gonna take some home. We're not wasting it. Today has been a full day of uh, looking at different neighborhoods, which is funny because I'm not actually moving here. I'm just curious where the Tesla people are moving. Here's our sweet ride for tonight. Not this ugly car, this one right here. Oh man, I feel bad for that guy. <laughs> he only he wishes he had a Tesla. All right, are you ready for this event tonight? Yeah, man. So we have a little present for you. Shoot, My a wife. present. Yep. So this is for the family. This is for you and I to split. This is Lamb's <laughs> Candy. This is the oldest candy maker in Austin, Texas. Okay. They started in on Congress Avenue where we're going later in 1885. Dang. And this is their famous pecan pralines. You can read all about it here. Well, thank you. That was really nice for you. I know I did get him a present too. I got you a present. Oh, really? But it's it's not as unique as that. I mean, it's unique. <laughs> okay, I'm doing it right now. Hold this. I'm excited. Hold this bad boy. I'm excited. This is something that was very hard for me to get. Only a few, select few Tesla employees got this. And I'm giving you one of them. I, okay. I have two. This is to thank you for everything. Oh, the I, boring brick? I brought you a real legit boring brick. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> this is a brick right here. I haven't made a video about it yet. I'm going to. Wow. Um, but what's inside of a Tesla boring brick? This is from the very first boring tunnel that Tesla made. Elon Musk wasn't happy with how the logo turned out on there. So instead of selling these for a dollar a brick, which he was planning on doing, he just gave the first 100 of them to employees. Wow, this you is got amazing, a brick. dude. Thank you guys so much. What do you give the man who has everything <laughs> when it comes to Tesla? A brick. a brick. You give him a brick <laughs> and he's happy about it. Oh, I love it, dude. I love it. All right, here we go. We are getting close to the Tesla Gigafactory. And there's supposed to be a couple of Tesla Roasters, so we'll see. And then there's all of the people for the meetup. There's Matt. He's like right here in Warbeck. Your special place. Look at all the people taking pictures of it. That is solid. It's 6.30 on the nose when we're, everyone's supposed to arrive. <laughs> We've already got like 40 cars here. It's gonna, it's gonna look cool though. It's gonna be a great turnout. Look at this, all these Teslas are just like rolling in. They've got a PA system all set up. Look at all the Teslas. So this is what it looks like when you get a bunch of Tesla owners that are so passionate about their cars and about Elon Musk and everything that they're doing that they would come out here and bring their cars on a hot over 100 degree day in Texas. So look at dirt, listen to that. The trucks are honking at us, that's pretty cool. And then we just have Teslas all the way down here, all the way down this row. And I love that people are just taking pictures and videos with their phones. They love their Teslas. All right, the crowd is assembling. I think we have most of the vehicles here. There are two Roadsters here. I saw them when I was flying the drone. 
I just don't know who the Roadster owners are, so we need to figure out who that is. Okay, we did it. Behind me is Eric and Ron. They are the owners of the Tesla Roadsters. So we're gonna go check them out right now. Here's the first one. Okay, Ron, what color is your car? Very orange. Very orange, is that the actual name for it? That's the actual name Very, I love Elon, he's so funny. <laughs> well, I was in the market to buy another Tesla to um, add to my uh, Model S. So I started searching around for used um, Model S's and a bunch of Roadsters popped up in my searches and I said, what, I could buy a Roadster? <laughs> <laughs> I work from home, so I take it out to lunch and whenever the weather's good, it, it's like my my main, my daily driver. And I would imagine your other car is a BMW. Why do you have a BMW hat on so at the this Tesla is the event? Most comfortable <laughs> hat that I own. Uh, okay, that's and fair. I've had it for about 10 years. What I like about Ron's Tesla Roadster, it does have the same type of seats that our red and blue one have, where it's like multicolor. A lot of the earlier ones didn't have this type of seats, and you had to like get them custom made. It does have a really nice sound system, like ours has, with, with the rear backup camera. What year is this one, and what's the VIN? 2008, uh, VIN 241. So this is number 241? Yeah. Oh, and it still has the nice seats. Yeah. We got the orange Tesla Roadster here in Texas. That's a pretty color. Very orange. It's very orange. Okay, Eric, where's your Tesla Roadster? Right this way. All right, we're gonna go check out Eric's car. You know this Wait a second, this is purple. You're Eric, you're the Eric that wanted the purple Roadster that Carl had a few weeks ago. Yes, sir. This wrapped purple? Nope, this car is a one-off. It's been 744 that was custom painted. It's a Lamborghini color called Aubergine Purple. Custom painted by Tesla? By Tesla. Oh, how many did they make of this? One. Wait, one. There's one in the United States and there's supposedly one in Europe, but I have never seen it. And you got it. I got it. This is it. The Purple Roadster! Eric bought the car from Carl and shipped it down here and somehow he came and just surprised me with this car. It arrived yesterday. Just yesterday? He put new seats in. I like the white seats. This is the Spark on ML3. It has a white interior, so. Yeah, oh, okay. Love, love the white. Dude, that's a sweet car. And I hear police sirens. Police sirens are on their way. I really feel like we're gonna get shut down, but I don't know if it's for us. <laughs> it's not for us, they kept going. Um, we're right on the shoulder of the road right here. It's insane. And we're back doing his thing over here, being the, the host. Crazy. What's inside? <laughs> I'm assuming most people are from Austin. Did anybody drive in from out of town? South Raise Dallas. your hands. Where? South Dallas. South oh. Dallas? Oh. San Antonio. San Antonio? Houston. Houston? Our friend Dan came all the way from Utah to come film and <laughs> Anwar Beck giving me a shout out. He doesn't need to give me a shout out, but he's nice. So Anwar Beck just did a nice little talk and then now he has some like giveaways. How many Gigafactories are there? Name them. People raise their hands and then whoever gets it right gets the prize. But like these people love Tesla and they're so proud that it's coming to Austin. And I gotta tell you, this site is incredibly massive. One interesting thing about it is that this is some not good dirt out here. It's some clay dirt right here. There's a reason why such prime real estate, not that far away from the airport, hasn't sold for all these years. And a big part of that is the soil is not very good to build on. So the first thing they have to do is dig out a bunch of dirt, bring in a bunch of backfill, put the road base on here. And then if you look over on the corner, they actually are putting in pillars hundreds and hundreds of pillars. They drill down to bedrock and then they put a pillar down in there. And so that when they do the building, at least it has a solid foundation that even if the soil kind of moves, the building is built off of that so it doesn't sink down in because the bedrock will hold it in. It's a very similar thing that you see with a lot of houses when they start to sink or they don't do them right, they have to come in and put these pillars in. It looks like every 20 feet they're putting a pillar in. It's gonna take a little bit of work, but it's definitely gonna be on Elon time which is kind of funny because Elon time usually means like really slow. But in this case, Elon time for building a manufacturing facility in Shanghai, China, they built it in less than a year and they were shipping products out. And then in Berlin, right now they're flying on their factory. They just barely tore down a bunch of trees for the site. It's kind of ridiculous how fast he ramps up. And this thing is gonna be bigger than any of them. So I think I'm gonna come back in a year or two from now and see what it looks like with the finished product. It's gonna be like a mini city. Not only do they own this land right here, they own the land way up, up the road, and then there's a freeway right here, and on the other side, they own another 2,000 acres. During COVID, 
there was a big issue. I'm gonna take this off, I'm away from everybody. During COVID, there were some issues with Elon Musk and some of the government officials in California where they wouldn't let him reopen his factory, even though he had every protocol in place. They'd already been running things in China. They know how to run things. And it was really a politically motivated attack against Elon Musk. And so he came out publicly on Twitter and just said, all right, I'm leaving California. I'm gonna go to Austin. And so um, there are some really nice neighborhoods here that Elon Musk is looking at potentially moving to. And the rumor is around here, like people think that the 2000 acres on the other side of the freeway will most likely be where the company headquarters is. I mean, they might put it here too, but Austin, Texas, home of Tesla, it makes a lot of sense. The tax rates are great. You can hire employees for a lot less money than California. California is a great place. But when it comes to running a business, it's not the easiest place to run a business from a financial standpoint, especially when you have government stepping in and not even let, letting you do what you do, which is produce cars. So anyway, very interesting backstory with this. Yes, I know it's a car company building um, a car factory and you're like, why did you travel down here? Elon's goal with Tesla is more than just building cars. It's about, in a way, changing the world, having a sustainable future for the future generations so that they can live longer on this earth because they've rid themselves of like gas cars. And so this is a big part of it. They'll probably produce the next generation batteries here, a lot of stuff. So anyway, there's all my uh, boring Tesla knowledge on the battery thing and why I'm here. I'm gonna go hang out and talk to some of these cool people that are here. Look at this guy. Boom! Those of you who don't know, this is the Puerto Rico flag with the Tesla logo, right? <laughs> no, yeah. this is Texas, this is Texas. <laughs> Welcome Elon to Texas. Almost all the cars are gone right now, so it's time to bring out the flamethrower. There's Matt rocking it. <laughs> flamethrower to be at Tesla factory Austin, Tesla Giga Austin, whatever you want to call it. It was incredible, dude. I'm pretty sure we had all 100 Teslas registered come. I'm super surprised. Austin is a cool place. And seriously, I know I said it earlier and maybe it sounds like a commercial for these guys. They really are just my friends. And Matt and Warbeck really are the experts when it comes to buying a house down here. If you're a Tesla employee and you're looking to come down here or you want to work down here, he's laughing right now. Seriously, I'll put a link in the description. They're our friends on Instagram, you'll see them. And maybe they'll let you come here and use the flamethrower if you buy a house. It's a and test drive and with any drive. All kinds of stuff. <laughs> our last stop of the night is to Amy's Ice Cream. I guess this is a very classic place here in town, one of the best ice cream places. So I got an Oreo milkshake. That sounds good to me. I don't know if I said it on camera, but I speculated that Tesla may have stopped the dirt trucks for our meetup. Because when we were there last night and we were there this morning, there was dirt, a dirt truck going every 30 seconds, 50 miles an hour down that road, either unloading dirt or leaving to go get more dirt. Like it's seriously an amazing production. And while we were there, there weren't that many trucks other than the people doing the pillars. There really wasn't any work going on at Gigafactory. We just got confirmation from somebody, can't say who it is, but somebody at Tesla did tell us that um, they may have stopped, slowed production a little bit for us to make it a little safer on the side of the highway. And uh, so the event went smoothly. Nobody got hit by a truck. I feel kind of special that I came all the way to Austin to see the dirt for the Gigafactory and they actually stopped production for me to make you this video. I mean, it wasn't specifically for the video, but it was for the event. And we based the event off of me coming down here. So um, thank you, Tesla and Elon, even though you don't know that you did this kind of for me in a way. But anyways, I'm gonna go enjoy my ice cream. Um, Austin's a really cool place. We had a lot of fun. I hope that you enjoyed this video. And uh, Tesla people that are moving to Austin, you're pretty lucky. This is gonna be a cool place. All right, see ya. Mercedes in front of us. What is up with the rims? <laughs> it's taking up the entire lane. You can't pass them. Your glasses are a little crooked. Okay, my glasses are crooked. I'm not smart. Another thing, like I did with the Death Valley video the other day, you couldn't tell how hot it is. It's 105 today and pretty humid in Austin. So if you see sweat going on, like you're licking salt, that's what it sounds like. I mean, I know I'm from Salt Lake City, Utah, but this is the salt lick, like, yeah. It's like, ah, approved.